So Spellman, 25 years of paintings? I didn't know you've been doing art that long. You're not that old, so I mean, tell me about this. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm 60 years old and I've been painting what? for at least 40, starting at college in Stanford when I really took it up seriously. No, I've been painting a long time. This is only the most recent 25 years. So how come this isn't a 40-year retrospective then? Well, we decided to pick uh, a period that would go back to my East Coast days where I had the shows at the Museum of the City of New York and the Hudson River Museum. It was also when I was very involved with California. So it was a good point and I was very well entranced with my vision of doing the mapping thing. If you go back further, you'll see things that aren't mapping. You'll see regular landscapes and other kinds of depictions of the world. So I'm not dealing with that part of my work. Okay, so this is strictly mapping. I mean, this is a very geographically based artwork. How did you come upon that? Well, I've been developing it for years and years. I think partly being a child of the 60s and growing up in the space age and watching all the NASA activities, bringing back satellite images and views of the Earth was very intriguing to me, and that got me started on it. Okay, I love the artwork because you bring in the texture of the Earth the outlines and the colors of it, but then you take it to another dimension. I mean, how did you manage to uh, kind of take the map and then build from there? That's a, that's a good question. It has a lot to do with my influences, some of my teachers growing up in a modernist period and then being very exposed to abstract expressionism. So I had a thing where I was interested in the accuracy. I, I liked what the satellite did. I liked the aerial photographs. I liked being able to see geography and understand its geometry. And I studied photorealism. And along the way, I realized I didn't want to be too tight because it, it just wasn't my style. I wanted to have a more expressionistic gestural approach. So I'm really combining two very different kinds of approaches to paint handling. The accuracy of a projected image that's coming from a photorealist-based practice. I literally re-photographed satellite and area photographs, projected them. That's how I get the accuracy. I, I, I literally trace it to get started so that I don't have to worry about that. And then once I have that, I want to cut loose a little bit. I want to show the energy of the place. I want to show the dynamism. I don't want it to be too static. So I've got the combination of those two influences. Okay. Now you, you actually go back with some of your artwork that's on exhibit here to images from the 1700s. How, how do you approach dealing with historical subject matter? Well, it's, it's relatively easy. You, you find an old map and you do the same thing. You re-photograph the old map, project it, and go again. So where do you get some of your sources, you know, your sources for well, these? You know, I get them from books. These days it's easy to get from the internet. Over the years I would go to various libraries, uh, look at various collections. Uh, I was involved with various mapping societies. I have a huge collection of books of old maps. How do you pick which one you're going to uh, do for a painting? Uh, I, I look to see if they're visually interesting and what the composition is or if I can recompose within that. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the, the map was done for a specific region and I may want to pick a portion of that. So I'm, I'm looking at the composition primarily and then generally recomposing within that. Now you're, you're doing a project now too where you're looking at a hundred year gap in right. California, correct? That's right. This is my sabbatical body of work that I'm just beginning. There's an example here, there's I think two examples here of the concept where I worked in New York using the older maps and I got onto 100 years as an interesting time period. So in California, we're what, we're 2015, so I'm going to be going back to 1915 and I'm just starting to do that research. And there's a huge difference, of course, in California. 1915, it's sparsely developed. Uh, it's all before the wars and it's going to be fascinating to see what I find along those lines. Now, is any of your work political in nature? Because I, I noticed there were a couple of pieces uh, about fracking, I believe, in South uh, Dakota. I'm generally not political. It's, it's usually not my interest. I try and stay out of that. Fracking, just because it's a phenomena and it has to do with geology and oil and gas exploration and layers and the landscape, that's why it's you know, something that I've tried to follow. Now, what are you looking at uh, doing now? I noticed with your career, you've gone from 
extremely realistic depictions of geography to having a little more abstract touch to it, a little bit more free-flowing lines right. and so forth. Right. So right. where are you going after this? Well, well, we'll see where that goes, but I am trying to get a little bit looser, still have some level of accuracy. I've always had that expressionist impulse. If, if you look closely at the work, you'll, you'll see a variety of paint handling and paint substrata that I've mm -hmm. developed. Um, for years and years, I did lots and lots of uh, priming. Now I'm experimenting with not priming. I'm actually drawing onto panel, and then I'm scraping away. So you'll see layers of color coming from underneath that's mm -hmm. drawing. I'm doing a lot of paintings that are actually, it's just white paint, and the color's coming from the drawing that's impregnated into the board and then bleeds back up through the paint. I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm finished with that, so I'm probably going to continue with that. Once the work is dry, I go back and I take those surfaces and patina them. I sand them. Sometimes I, I do almost like an erosion thing. I knock them down and I take the little frosting tips, as I call them, that come off of palette knives that I tend to use. And then I beat them up and I rub them and I make them older and scuffed up. So you're kind of like the god of Spillman's world. <laughs> I guess so. Actually, there was a, a comment. There's a whole thing about white paintings, and I've always sort of been intrigued by them. So when I was living in the New York City area, I was seeing a lot of them. And I thought, well, I, I should do some, some white paintings that are map based. And I showed them to some friends and collectors. And they said, they're too clean. I mean, New York is, you know, a dirty town. I mean, you, it, it can't be that white. And a, I guess a light bulb went off and said, well, okay, let me, let me take care of that. So I got onto the idea that I could scuff them up. Graphite's really good that way because you can rub it and then you can start to smear it. And it, it picks up the texture of the paint. And I do that with other kinds of color pencils and what I use is art sticks. It's, a, it's like a color pencil. It's a wax-based drawing stick. And so I, I combine all those together and I, I really enjoy the sort of the after work. In fact, that's some of the reason you'll see the dates. It'll say, uh, you know, 1995 and 1997. <laughs> so in 97, I took the painting and I reworked it slightly. I love these. I mean, I never, I've never really looked at maps that, that way, which provides so much texture and depth to them. And I think it's fascinating, yeah. well, the interplay with, with our own geography on yeah. this world. Yeah.